Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about uncommon switch mode power supply topologies and look at tapped inductor converters. These are a variation of the basic bug boost and bug boost, where rather than using a two terminal inductor, you instead use a three terminal tapped inductor under one of multiple configurations. So if you're curious about what makes these special, then keep watching. Now before looking at the tapped inductor topologies, it's important to first understand what specific limitation found in the base topologies they are supposed to fix. Now with these, the output voltage is either smaller, larger or inverted compared to the input based on the exact topology, but the exact value, in continuous conduction mode at least, is duty cycle dependent based on a very clearly defined formula. So in theory at least, you can get any voltage from zero to the supply voltage in the case of the buck, and from the supply voltage to infinity in the case of the boost, and well, any voltage from zero to inverted infinity in the case of the buck boost. In reality, however, a converter will struggle quite a bit when the duty cycle reaches any one of the extremes. Usually the datasheet will impose a minimum and maximum off time, and you will also see efficiency steeply drop when operating at any of the edges. So on the one side, you are limited by the exact turn on and turn off behavior of the switches, which is non-ideal, there is always a transition time, then you have the instability of the duty cycle, and finally for converters using a bootstrap, these will require continuous switching for correct operation. So in general, you should keep converters somewhere in the 20 to 80% duty cycle range, and in extreme cases, 10 to 90%. Exceeding these ranges, can cause issues unless the converter is specifically designed to operate close to one extreme or another. So if the duty cycle range is limited, well so is the output range. You can no longer get any voltage, but rather you have a very clear limited interval. So when the ratio of input to output would force a very large or very small duty cycle, the base topologies are no longer adequate. However, as with any good technical problem, there are multiple solutions. You have quite a large range of topologies ranging from transformer based, like the forward or flyback, to specific topology combinations, like the boost charge pump, to the topic of the day, the tapped inductor topologies. So the basic idea behind tapping is that the base inductor is turned into a transformer, but the windings are not isolated. So especially if you don't need isolation between input and output, this sort of arrangement is perfectly reasonable, and for specific turns ratios, you should be able to find some standard components. With this new structure, you can define a transformation ratio based either on the inductance or the turns ratio. Now, because the two terminal component suddenly turned into a three terminal component, there are multiple ways to connect it into the circuit. So, we have three main cases based on which component from the initial supply is connected into the middle tap. So you have switch tapping, diode tapping, and finally rail tapping. So in this example, I'm using the buck converter, but these three topologies can be built for all three of the basic converters. Now, by changing the exact method of connection, all of these three different topologies have different voltage transformation ratios. So for the same duty cycle, you will be getting different output voltages. Now, if you're interested in the subject in more detail, as well as the exact equations needed to determine the exact voltage conversion ratio, I do recommend that you check out this paper, since this analyzes all of the three basic topologies and their multiple inductor tapping options. It's the only piece of information as detailed as it is that I could find on the subject, and of course I will be leaving a link to it in the description. But rather than going into the mathematical details today, Let's try out the circuit implementations in the circuit simulator. So tapping should help in getting all sorts of variations in the voltage conversion ratio. To test this out, I built a highly simplified version of the converters, so just the power stage, and I'm supplying this from a 10 volt power supply, and the exact duty cycle set by this voltage source driving the switch is stepped as a parameter. So I'm stepping the on time, not the exact duty cycle, but I am calculating the duty cycle as a extra parameter. 
So this way we should be able to observe the impact of the duty cycle on the output voltage which is measured using a dedicated measurement statement. So to start off, this was done for the basic buck converter, named reference, and then for the other three topologies. So we have the diode tapped buck, the switch tapped buck, and the rail tapped buck. And with all of these tapped inductors, I used ideal coupling and a turns ratio of 3 to 1. So finally, let's see how the topology impacts the output. Now, the simulation does take a while, there are 9 runs to go through, but anyway, once the simulations are done, we can look at the results in the error log. So here all of them are listed and can be analyzed one by one, but to make things clear, we can also right click and select plot stepped measured data. And while a new window appears, which is blank, so to make this a bit more interesting, we need to right click again inside of this window and select add traces. So here we want to plot out the output voltage for the diode, rail and switch tapped converters as well as for our reference. And to make things a bit more clear, we can also set the horizontal axis to rather than be the on time to be our duty cycle parameter. And final thing, we can also select mark data points. So these will be the actually simulated data. Everything else is just interpolation. And finally, we get this nice graph appearing. So what we can see here in the middle is the response of our reference. So the typical buck converter response, output voltage is more or less proportional to the duty cycle in a perfectly linear fashion. But with the other various tapped variations, the behavior does change. So switch tapping is pushing our graph upwards. For the same duty cycle, we are getting larger voltages. Diode tapping in green pushes the graph lower. We are getting lower voltages for the same duty cycle. And while rail tapping does a bit of both, for duty cycles below 50%, it provides smaller voltages. And for values above 50%, it provides larger voltages. Now, changing the transformer ratio will push the graphs out more from the center. So the graphs will be far more deformed from the ideal reference. But this is the result that you get with the 3 to 1 transformer ratio. Now, I created a similar setup for the boost converter as well. So for the base reference, as well as for the derivatives. So I'm using the same type of measurement and parameter statements. And I'm comparing the basic boost converter with the switch tapped, diode tapped, and the rail tapped implementations. Now, before even starting, the rail tapped looks a bit odd. And well, it is. The diode is pointing the wrong way. I mean, it's not wrong. It's just that this implementation of the converter is inverting. But anyway, if we run the simulation and wait again for it to finish, and then we generate the graph in the exact same way, we see a similar story to the buck converter. So all of the topologies are giving a different response. Now, before analyzing the results in more detail, there's one more modification that I want to make. So the rail tapped boost, the blue line, is inverted. And to make things a bit more comparable, I will uninvert it by simply putting a minus in front of it. So now, as before, we can compare the standard boost, so the reference voltage in red, with the other ones. And we can observe that switch tapping pushes our graph higher, so for the same duty cycle we are getting larger voltages, diode tapping in green pushes the graph lower, we are getting smaller voltages for the same duty cycle, and rail tapping does a bit of both, so up to a point it will provide smaller voltages, and above that point it will provide higher voltages but of course inverted. So inductor tapping can offer some very interesting options in the exact output voltage transformation ratio. So why is it uncommon? I mean, I personally did not find any such supply in the wild and even documentation about it is rather scarce. Well, other than the component cost, the tapped inductor, we can get one more clue if we look at the simulation and start unidealizing some of the components, namely the inductor. Now, to keep things simple, 
I would stick to just one implementation, the switch tapped buck converter. However, the same issues will show up with all of the other topologies. Now, if we run the simulation and we look at the converter using coupled inductors that have a 100% coupling factor, so our coupling is an ideal one, and we look at the voltages in the various nodes, the voltage in the node connected to the switch, this goes from zero to some high voltage value in a nice square wave. And well, if we look at the other important node, the one connected to the diode, we see a similar story. However, since the diode that we're simulating is not an ideal component, we already start to see some of the problems that we might face. These spikes that are appearing could push the diode into having too large of a reverse voltage applied to it. Now, things become far more interesting when we take a more realistic, non-ideal coupling factor. So let's say 99%. If we look at this case and we analyze the node connected to the switch, well, we are getting kilovolt level positive spikes. And in the node connected to the diode, we are getting some very nice oscillations appearing. So if left as is, both of these phenomena can cause issues with the converter's operation. Especially the switch can get destroyed from the extreme high voltages, and we also get a bit of unwanted emissions from our diode oscillations. Now, there are multiple ways of solving this issue using various snubber networks, one of the simplest being the usage of RC snubbers in parallel with the switching elements. Now, I did not put too much effort into choosing these values. However, with this circuit, if we look at the node connected to the switch, we can already see the spikes being limited to reasonable values, so only 70 something volts. There still is a bit of an oscillation, but that can still be improved upon. And the same can be said with the diode. We still are getting ringing, but it's no longer the continuous oscillation that we've seen with the previous circuit. So while in other converters, using snubbers is more of an option, here these become quite necessary to mainly protect the switching element. The circuit is now usable, but adding resistors will come with unwanted losses. So the tapped inductor converter is realistic and feasible if care is taken to implement it correctly. However, out of all of the topology variations, which is the best? Well, I could not find a lot of practical implementations that take advantage of it, but I did find a couple of very interesting application nodes. The one of these is linear technologies, currently analog devices, App note 44. So among other useful information, this gives a diode tapped buck implementation where the main switch is protected by a diode zener combination. And well, other than the schematic, you also get all of the mathematics accompanying this design. But other than this, I also found this application note 19, also from linear technology, and this treats the boost tapped inductor topologies in a bit more detail. So in this document, the topologies are referred to as the current boosted boost converter. So this is the diode tapped boost. And we also have the voltage boosted boost converter, which is the switch tapped boost converter. So the naming refers to the difference in the output compared to the switch current and voltage. And while well, in both of these cases, the exact protection method for the switch is an RCD type of snubber. So both of these documents will provide quite a bit of useful information if you want to practically build such a converter. In the end, tapped inductor converters are a legitimate topology that expands on the base-free topologies and offer various advantages while not using any extra switching elements. The only thing to keep in mind with such a converter is the need to provide adequate protection to the switching elements to prevent unwanted damage from the uncoupled inductance. And with that said, hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, there are more similar videos on my channel that you might want to check out. And if you want to be up to date with my latest releases, also consider subscribing. See you next time. Bye bye.